Howdy Heroes Hearth, Kyle Ferguson here from Into the Nexus Podcast, and I want to talk to you about Imperius, who's been getting a lot of weird press recently. Is he overpowered? Is he too much? Where does Imperius belong in this game? Well, there's two reasons why Imperius is such a confusing hero in the Nexus right now. The first is that he was the best Deathwing counter on Deathwing's release. Deathwing was running wild, absolutely overpowered on release, and Imperius's level 1 Burn the Impure was keeping him in line. So we ran a very, very different build on Imperius back then. Deathwing is immune to all CC, so there was no reason to ever cast Q on Deathwing. Our whole build was based around popping marks and destroying him in a very unique way. But as Deathwing was nerfed and slowly removed from the casual play, Imperius was lost. But suddenly, about a month ago, Imperius started seeing a huge resurgence, and many people started talking about his OP status. We have to take that with a grain of salt, because the majority of players still play this game in quick match. And in quick match, Imperius is often the tank. Tanks are a little unpopular in quick match, in comparison to things like bruisers. And Imperius, compared to his other bruiser brethren, is absolutely a main tank. So Imperius' win rate is inflated in quick match. And in that quick match environment, he brings self-healing, a long stun, a front line that is desperately needed, but we also get to ignore his primary weakness. Imperius has awful lane clear. So when he's picked up and put in Storm League, where there is drafted CC, where there is a proper front line, and where he has to face down an opponent solo laner that has lane clear, Imperius isn't looking as pretty. In fact, in the solo lane, it's more about just coverage and survivability. Imperius is unlikely to die, but he's certainly not gonna heal himself up like Sonya, and he certainly lacks the lane clear. He also has horrible Merc ability. Imperius really shines when he gets to join those later game team fights. And if he gets to follow up CC rather than be the CC in the first place, now we're looking at an Imperius who can actually be OP. So if you're interested in Imperius and just butchering the enemy team with a very cool skill set, there is a learning curve. And I wish I could tell you that there was a nice, easy to play training wheels build that could get you proficient with Imperius. But honestly, it's way better that you go out there, suck it up, and hit your cues. And so much of this is based around Flash of Anger. Flash of Anger, consuming a mark from Celestial Charge, deals 180 damage to the target and nearby enemies, and grants Imperius a 300 point shield for 4 seconds. If you've ever exploded after Imperius has hit you with a spear, this talent is the reason why. This is what the build is going to look like on the baseline. Of course, there's wiggle room at 1, 10, 20. You may even vary your 4 on maps like Braxis. The thing you have to acknowledge here is that all your talents are in your Q, your Celestial Charge. This means that your W, your E, per point of mana, have very little value. They are about making your Celestial Charge more powerful. And Celestial Charge, while it has a very nice spear-shaped graphic, is very, very thin. It is very easy to miss with. On the range side of things, though, it is very massive and can hit a lot of targets in a single go, dragging them all together. So we're always looking for some chances to follow up other people's CCs and increase our chance to hit our spear. Let enemy players choose their pathing. If they're running towards an exit, make sure they're running through that choke before you aim your spear. But we also have Solarian's Fire, which releases a fiery wave, dealing damage. Enemies in the center take bonus damage, but it has on it a 40% slow for three seconds. Hitting your W first absolutely can aid you in hitting that Q. Molten Armor is basically ignorable damage, but you heal for 50% of the damage dealt, and you increase that to 100% against heroes. The interesting thing about Molten Armor is that it makes its way through available targets in kind of a clockwise format. It's going to go around to all these targets and apply one mark each 
as it completes its duration. When dueling a single target, it'll put all those marks into a single target, meaning that you're continually refreshing your trait. And let's talk about that trait. Valorous Brand. Each basic ability marks enemy heroes hit for 10 seconds. Basic attacks consume this mark, dealing 20% bonus damage per mark and healing for 78 per mark. Celestial Charge, Solarian's Fire, Molten Armor, all apply these marks. If we want more burst damage, we apply all three, and then it climaxes in a big burst of healing and damage for Imperius. And the great thing about this build is our most important ability is also our cheapest. 40 mana for a Celestial Charge, 50 mana for a Solarian's Fire, and 75 for a Molten Armor. If you are out of mana, it is because you are overcasting Molten Armor. But this language here is really important, becomes more important as we look at the build. Lunge towards a target direction and stab, dealing damage. If an enemy hero is hit, channel to stun for one second, and deal 73 additional damage when it fully finishes. It's a channel stun. You are locked into this animation. All CCs that affect a channel, so basically CCs other than a root or slow, stop you from channeling the stun. The enemy has a chance to cut it short. You miss out on the duration of that stun, and you miss out on the bonus damage. You can also use Q to jump over terrain, to get around the map to make a quick escape where enemies think you may not be able to go. But the opportunity cost on using Q in this way is huge because you are not taking advantage of your basically stun-bot job for the entire team. And let's zoom past Burn the Impure here. This is great against Deathwing, it's great against Diablo. The enemy may stack upon stack huge health heroes, in which case Burn the Impure is going to help you out. But I really want to focus on Impaling Light right now. Celestial Charge's final damage is increased by 125%, and its cooldown is reduced by 1.25 seconds for each Valorous Brand on the target when the stun completes. Now there's some interesting information here. The final damage is increased, so we want to make sure we're not interrupted during our channeled stun. But the stun completes whether or not it goes its full duration. The stun ends, and when it ends, we reduce the cooldown of Celestial Charge. So when you're practicing your Q stuns, we want to do exactly what logic would tell us. We're going to lead with Solarian's Fire. It's going to make it easier for us to hit our stun, but it's also going to put a mark on the enemy. When we go in for our Q, we supply the second mark, and the cooldown is reduced for each Valorous brand on the target when the stun completes. So what we're looking at at the end is a W, Q, then E before it ends. You can see down here that cooldown reduction. Now this works on multiple targets, and this is where you can become a mini mosh pit. W through, stab, E, instant Q ready to rock. Cooldown reductions like this take a massive amount of mana, so hopefully you can win your team fight pretty fast. We're also dealing level 1 points of damage here, and hitting 3 heroes is not the easiest thing on the planet. In this tri-mode environment, I can't really show you why Battle Hunger increasing Valorous's brand's healing by 70% feels good, but it does. More survivability is great for the guy doing all the stuns. It also feels very rewarding when you remove those marks. And that's the next thing you need to learn. We need to frame up our cues properly, we need to execute a WQE maneuver, but you also need to stutter step. You need to change your targeting in rhythm to make sure you take advantage of removing your Celestial Charge. Come Flash of Anger. I don't need to tell you that shields are great. Getting healing underneath a shield is also great. During these big moments of stuns, you're going to be the one receiving all the damage. After all, you're making the most threatening actions on the field. But something to note about this shield is that it doesn't build. You always get a 395 point shield. If you already have a 395 point shield for 4 seconds, you get a new refreshed version of that 395 point shield. But in the heat of battle, this is an invincible Imperius. Using the same combo we did before, W, Q into the E, 
We're going to make our way from Mark to Mark and remove those. So here we're making three different auto attacks using our right click in order to remove the Q Mark. And it's worth noting here on the graphic that our middle matches our W, our E matches the right side, and our Q is the leftmost mark here. So when we remove that mark, there's the explosion. That's where the Kale Fast Living Bomb effect appears. And because our Q drags people together impaled by the spear, we can get massive damage out at the same time we have massive survivability. Survivability, shielding, getting into positions for good spears. Having another shield on top of that is pretty darn useful. And Angelic Armaments is going to be your go-to. Rathia and Jiris is cute. It allows you to isolate a target. Mostly I use it in extreme situations where I need to engage before my team gets there and avoid the battlefield for a time, as we will be in space and a slight reposition is possible. This can't go over walls. It has a lot of limited speed and functionality to it. So the only reason I would recommend you ever take it is because you want to dodge the early team fight because of the enemy burst damage. And you know what else is really good at dealing with burst damage? Shields. And if the shield lasts its full duration of three seconds, you get to reactivate it to become Mini Li Ming. This armaments Magic Missile Blast does a really good amount of damage. If your big level 7 combo didn't delete anybody, you're certainly looking that way right now. But there's a sad truth in that Celestial Charge is a channel. Imperius is occupied on his spear stun. So you cannot cast your Magic Missiles during the stun. But that doesn't mean you couldn't load up, get ready, land a stun, and then fire as soon as it's over to increase your chance to hit. Level 13, Pathetic Mortals. Stunning an enemy hero with Celestial Charge reduces their movement speed by 25 and their damage by 50%. Well, that's nice. There's some other good options here. Reducing their movement speed is actually about comboing into level 16, where we're also going to gain Celestial Swiftness, where we gain 25% movement speed for 5 seconds after casting Celestial Charge. And you gain 40% attack speed for each hero stunned with Celestial Charge. That stacks. Let's just see a little bit of that in action here while we're stutter stepping through our enemies. One for you, one for you, one for you, and just stabbing the heck out of people. But it goes and removes the marks. That's when we stack on the Mother Load, Brand of Solarian. Reduce the duration of Valorous Brand to five seconds by half, but no longer consumed when triggered. That same combo into these guys and just blam, 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 blam. Now, of course, this is the dream, but it's an excellent dream. And this is still an auto attack stack. <laughs> look at him go. Impossible situation in a normal game. But look what is capable by this build. Absolutely nuts. So with some fellow CC in tow, in the late game, you're looking at a combo that's going to deal over 3,000 damage insanely quickly. Even more if you're able to lock on for the full duration of your mark at 5 seconds. Just stay calm during the early game, build up to level 7, and join those team fights whenever you can get a slight advantage in your lane. We will continue to hear about Imperius being OP until Flash of Anger is really changed up. That power spike is just too darn good to allow for other builds right now. But take advantage of it, climb with this build, enjoy! I was Kyle Ferguson, be sure to like and subscribe here at Heroes Hearth and ring that bell. I'll see you next week with more learn-to-play content for Heroes of the Storm.